you've probably come across these test screwdrivers before because they've been around a very long time. The circuitry has changed. It's definitely changed in this one. It's, it's not even what was shown in the picture in the listing. But the idea is that if you want to test continuity, if you bridge one end to the other, the little red LED in there lights. And also, if you hold it near a live electrical connection, is it going to work? Yeah, it glows. You, it's, you can see it flickering slightly there just because it's picking up the sort of the AC signal. And likewise, you can actually stuff it right into a live electrical connection, apparently. Let me just uh, prise this open and then it definitely, it definitely lights brightly when it's uh, stuffed into a live electrical connection. Not that I totally recommend it, because the Chinese have this very odd definition of electrical separation. Basically none. Let's zoom down a bit, because here's the interesting one. This one didn't work when it first arrived, and the, the reason for that was just a bad battery connection, but I get the feeling that they expect the batteries not to last too long because they supplied another little heat-shrinked or sleeved stack of cells to replace the original ones. But this one has two LEDs. And if I put a finger on it, that looks static to me, but it looks as though it's flashing on and off to you because it's got a microcontroller in it by the look of it. And it does have another LED. And the idea is that if you, say for instance, I'll wedge the safety thing open with uh, this screwdriver. If you go into, say, neutral, just the green LED will light. But then if you go into, being careful not to touch both at once here. Uh, if you go into the live, the red LED in there lights as well. So it gives you an idea of uh, not just continuity. and Because if you go into earth or neutral, it's effectively your reference to ground. So that will just sort of light continually, much like, you know, just when you're bridging it out. But the fact that uh, it can detect that and it lights the two LEDs is quite interesting. So let's open them. I shall actually use each screwdriver to open its rival. Oh, that is a spring, and it doesn't want to actually open. Yeah, that is actually want to spring back. Uh, is this going to come out at all? It's all gone horribly wrong. Yeah, there's a spring in there, and it's, it's springing up. Right, let's uh, knock this out. Here is the circuit board. I can see two transistors. Now, the classic version of this, we'll we reverse engineer this, the classic version of this used a Darlington, just a single Darlington transistor with a pull-down resistor and then a safety resistor or two. I can see those two resistors in the series here, but with poor separation. Mm, I shall explore this further. Um, but this one is using two transistors, which may be just configured as, as that sort of rudimentary Darlington. I shall put that one to the side so we don't mix the bits up. And I shall go into this one which I've already had open because I had to open it. I had to bend the uh, uh, resistor lead, or should I say, is it, yeah, it's just a wire lead, over at the top because it just went up straight initially. Uh, this one does not have much in it. It's got three little resistor type components, the two LEDs and the mystery eight pin chip. Right, tell you what. Uh, let's get a close up of these. I shall take a picture and reverse engineer them. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. The screwdrivers have been rebuilt and we're ready to explore these. See the pulse in green? That's just a, an intermodulation effect because it is pulse that's modulating. It's microcontroller controlled. Let's take a look at the uh, simple one first. Now, I saw the two transistors through, through the side and I thought they were actually going to be the same. I thought it was going to be what they call a Darlington. In a way, it is cas cascaded transistors, but one is NPN and one is PNP. It's quite odd. We've got two resistors here to limit the current that could flow into it. These are kind of for safety, but to be honest, I think I'd rather have had a better spacing on them. Um, I just, I, I prefer a, a good margin between me and the mains, because uh, if you've got your finger in the end of this, and it's just the circuitry between you and those resistors between a live connection, and you're well grounded, it could be bad news. I prefer bigger resistors. Anyway, we've got those two resistors, we've got the two transistors, the LED, and I shall show you the schematic for this. It's very simple. Here's the two batteries to give a three volt supply, the two cells, a battery of cells. The touch connection is connected to the positive side of that for a good reason. 
Here are the two uh, resistors, 12K and 2 meg ohm, the safety resistors. There's a tip you either touch with your fingers for continuity like this, or touch onto live electrical connections, or even hold just near electrical connections, and the radiated field will be picked up and it'll make the LED flicker. Uh, so the first transistor here, which is NPN, uh, amplifies that small amount of current to a degree. It won't be a huge amount of uh, amplification. Well, it won't start off. It will start off the very low current. So I'd guess the amplification here will be about 300 times. That's what it usually is for these little signal transistors. But then that goes up and it's now it's amplified. It goes into the base of this PNP transistor. PNP transistors normally are connected to the positive rail. So it's odd that this LED isn't down here, but I get the feeling they may have done that deliberately. But because this uh, the base of the PNP transistor is being pulled down by this transistor, it amplifies it again. She so end up with a compound multiplication of that uh, current in there, and it's enough to make the LED glow. I'm guessing that because the LED is up there, um, as the as the LED lights up, the voltage across this uh, transistor will sort of drop, and that kind of acts as a very crude regulator. It's very simple. Now let's take a look at the other one. This is a bit strange. The listing I bought this from, I shall turn this around the other way, it's nice the other way. The listing I bought this from showed this picture. And if we look at this picture, it shows two transistors, it shows the two, two mega ohm resistors for the safety in the series. I'm not sure what the diode's for, maybe a Zener diode, not sure. And a resistor, not sure what that's for, uh, unless it was for one of the LEDs. I'm not sure. But these two transistors, I guess, might be MOSFETs, an N-channel MOSFET and a P-channel MOSFET with a resistor across between, uh, to the base, uh, to, to the gate of each, should I say, just to sort of drag it down. Uh, but that's not what arrived. I was hoping it was going to be this one. I was quite intrigued to see what the circuitry was. Instead, we've got a microcontroller, which is just ludicrous in a test pen. So, the microcontroller has the, it drives the two LEDs directly, so it's relying on the impedance of the, well, the cells, as well as the output gates, and it is also to control the intensity, keep the current down, it's pulsive modulating them to down about, to about 6 milliamps. The standby current of this circuitry is ludicrous. The, it starts off, if, if it's been active, it shows a slight residual current of about 7 microamps, and then it drops to zero. I couldn't measure it. Uh, but it is still active. It is still tapping at that just to actually check the inputs. And then when it sees an input, it wakes up. Uh, on the input, we have uh, 476, so that's 47 and 60, so that's 47 mego. And then we've got two resistors, one going to each of these pins. One is quite low value, it's 1.5 mega ohm. The other is a ludicrous value. I uh, couldn't measure it in circuit, it was such a high value, uh, of 100 mega ohm. And I think that's what it's using to detect uh, just an ambient, say for instance, just you touching it. It's only enough to trigger one of the inputs. But if you touch it to the mains, uh, then the voltage is high enough that enough current flows that it triggers a second input. Um, and th these will just have a, a pull-up resistor. Um, the yeah, that's it. Microcontroller, two LEDs, and two inputs from two resistors. That's fundamentally it. Let me show you the schematic. Oh, note, incidentally, that the super high impedance input, the one with the super high value resistor, 100 mega, good. It, instead, it, the track layer is a bit odd. It comes right up round here and back down. Don't know if that's for field sensing. It might be for field sensing. Not sure. Let me just. Hold this up next to, uh, that's the wrong one, hold up to next to, no, it's just the green one that lights when I hold it up, in the vicinity of stuff, that's strange. But here is the schematic, we've got the three cells creating a 4.5 volt battery, plus 4.5 volts. In this instance, the touch sensor is actually going to the zero volt rail, which means that these, uh, the chip in here will be pulling these up to this sort of positive rail with that weak internal pull-up, uh, which I think these resistors have been chosen to be able to defeat that pull-up in when the current is high enough. Uh, 47 mega ohm resistor and then splitting out into that huge 100 mega ohm and the smaller 1.5 mega ohm. Um, so the 1.5 mega ohm will be the high sensitivity input 
and it will just easily defeat that sort of pull up resistor, that tiny uh, pull up current. But uh, for the higher voltages, it takes uh, that higher voltage to be able to defeat the other input three via the 100 meg ohm resistor. And then just two LEDs. It's super simple. It's ridiculous that they've actually got a microcontroller in there. It's obscene. But there we have it. I may take a look out for other ones because uh, they seem to be changing these, the design of these quite a lot. But that's very interesting. They're not that expensive. I don't really rate their electrical separation. But uh, if you ever use one of these, they're good for continuity tests and things like that. But if you ever use one of these, I do recommend not being in a well-grounded environment, not touching grounded metalwork while you're actually using them. Uh, just prefer test lamps and stuff, but these are a good visual check for things like uh, just live wires while you're just to, as a double check to make sure you have isolated it. Interesting things, well worth getting and exploring, quite unexpected circuitry.